Hi guys and welcome to this Divi WordPress theme tutorial. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Well today, if I scroll down a little bit, we're just going to put together this little flow chart with the Divi theme here. If you're making any sort of WordPress site at all, I do suggest you take a look at the Divi theme. It's just absolutely awesome. I have literally built hundreds of sites with it. It just keeps getting better and better and easier and easier to use with more and more features. So if you want to take it for a test drive, you can do so below this video from my affiliate link. So let's get started on building this little flow chart type thing. What I'm going to do is enable Divi's Visual Builder here, which enables us to build everything on the front end. And I'm going to go down and I'm going to create a new section. Let's go down here. Hit the blue button for a new section, regular section. And it'll prompt us for how many rows we want to put in our section. So I'm going to use four. There we have it. We've now got a section with four columns in it. I'm going to insert a blurb module. By default, Divi comes with loads of modules for creating with. And I'm just going to change a few things. I'm going to keep it fairly simple. I'm not going to even change the title. I'll leave the text as it is. I'm going to use an icon rather than an image. Use the icon. And let's just select one. Well, I think before our Use the little home type icon, and by default, Divi comes with all these icons built in here. Here we are, let's just use this one. Okay, now I want to sort of change the background to make it stand out. So I close that up, go down to background. I'm just going to give it a background color. You've got color, gradient, image, or video. I'm just going to use color, hit the plus. I'm just going to make it blue. And I'm going to copy that color right there because I want it for our pseudo element. I can always come back and get it in a minute. Okay, well, what we need to do is give this stuff some padding inside and make it a color that stands out against that blue. So let's go to our design, image and icon. I'm just going to simply make it white. Close that up, go down to text. I'm going to centralize that text, align it centrally. I don't know if you can see that or not, but when I do this, make it light, you should see it a lot better. That's great, but it's got no real re breathing space in there. And it's sort of squished up against the corners. So we'll go down to the spacing and add a bit of padding. And I'm going to give it 20 pixels. Hit the chain, it'll do the bottom, top and bottom. And same for left and right, 20. Hit the chain, left and right. There we go. If you've got that chain highlighted, if you change one, it'll change the other as well for you. Okay, so that's, that's sort of readable. Now then, what we want to do is add our little pseudo element in the after tab. So we've got a little sort of arrow pointing to the next one. So if we go to advanced and we go to CSS, custom CSS, scroll down to after and we'll start writing some CSS. Don't worry about following this on screen so much. I'll put the CSS that I'm writing here down below and you're welcome to use it if you want to. So first of all, we want to put content and it's colon, two single inverted commas, and then always finish off with a semicolon. If you don't put the semicolon there, it won't read the next line. And we want to say display colon block, semicolon. Now then, what do we actually want? We want to create something that's, that's we're going to actually create a little square and then we're going to rotate it 
by 45 degrees so it looks like a triangle sticking out here so I'm going to make it uh, say 60 pixels wide and 60 pixels tall so we'll say height 60 pixels semicolon width same 60 pixels semicolon and we want to give it you can't see anything yet obviously because I haven't given it a background color or anything we want to say position absolute colon absolute so basically when we place it where we want to place it it's going to stay there semicolon now then from the top we're going to want it about halfway down so we'll try 50 well i know you can't see anything yet but you will do in a minute so i'm going to say from the top i'll give it say 50 percent maybe too much we can always adjust that later semicolon and because it's 60 pixels wide means it's going to be sticking out 60 pixels from here when we flip it we only want one half sticking out so we want it sort of halfway over the line there so we can say to the right minus 30 pixels and that will pull it from the right 30 pixels that way so let's try that We can always adjust this more when we see it. Semicolon. Now, we want to make sure that this stays on the top and our pseudo element is underneath, behind, hidden it. So we can give it a Z index or a Z index of, say, minus one. That should do it. That'll pull it back behind our element. And if it doesn't, we'll just give it a higher number and that should do it. Semicolon. Uh, okay, well, let's give our thing a color. And I want to use that color that I copied right here. So I'm going to say background. Color. And semicolon and then put in that color that I had. There it is. And you can now see our square. Perhaps I should have put that in earlier so you could see it. Okay. And it looks like it's, I really want it sort of halfway, but I'm actually going to adjust the height of this in a minute. So I'll leave it for the time being. So we've got a square. What we need to do is flip it, rotate it. So it's just got the pointy bit sticking out this way. So it looks more like an arrow. So what we'll do here, is we'll transform and what sort of transformation do we want we want to rotate so we'll do colon rotate and how much we want it to be rotated by we'll open some round brackets here and we'll say 45 degrees 90 degrees it would just flip it all the way around so you wouldn't see any difference seeing as it's a square so we want to sort of flip it 45 degrees so we've got the pointy bit sticking out 45 degrees there we go and there you've got something that looks a bit like an arrow and that works for me now to make this compatible with all browsers we want to add some what they call vendor prefixes so i'm going to copy that line control c uh, i want to make sure i put my semicolon after there as well i'm going to copy that again now i put that there what happens when i talk and code at the same time i forget stuff and we're going to do ms and then paste it in there that should take care of Edge and Explorer. And we want to do WebKit as well. It's dash WebKit dash. And like I say, don't worry about copying this code. I'll put it below. If anybody wants to use it, you're more than welcome. That way it should be compatible with all browsers. 
there are still some older ones that simply just won't work with this explorer 6 and before but if you're running that well it's time you upgraded probably okay so it's there and we've got pretty much everything i want in there but thinking ahead i'm presuming that perhaps all our blocks are going to have different amounts of text in them uh, whatever you happen to be saying with your little flow chart or whatever and so to keep it consistent i'm going to give this a fixed height and i'm going to say 500 pixels so if we just go up to our main element we're in custom css still i'm just going to give it a height colon and I'm guessing we'll try say 500 pixels. I think that's what I used above. There we go. You can see it's added a bit of space at the bottom there. And I want them all to be that same height. Else it's just going to look sort of inconsistent with the different amounts of writing. Okay, so that kind of works. And our little arrow. Oh, I want it sort of fairly equal from the top and the bottom at the moment it's lagging a bit towards the bottom so we we did that with our top 50 percent i'm going to select that and let's try 40 percent that may be not enough okay it's a bit towards the top there so let's do 45 percent and that that should be close enough there we go, that may not be exact, but it's close enough for me, that's fine. Now, one other thing that I've, I think I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna add a bit of box shadow. Now, when I add that box shadow, it's just gonna add it to this module. It's not gonna add it to our pseudo element over here, our after pointy bit. That's okay, if you wanted to, you could add one separately, but you're still gonna have a shadow along the line here. I did that with this above here and I just thought that looked quite effective. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So if we go to our design tab, down to box shadow, I'm going to use that one right there. There we go. And if you wanted to, like I said, I don't think it will, will look too good. I haven't tried it. So let's try it. You can add a box shadow to your pseudo element as well. So we'll say box shadow by pix by five pix by fifteen pix, and we'll give it a color. It's not too bad. A semicolon. I mean, I've given one to that one as well. Like I say, you've still got that shadow there. Well, let's leave that. If you want to do that it's up to you i'll leave that in the uh, css if you want to use it by all means do so okay so i'm fairly happy with that let's just save it, it gets easier and easier from here save our changes now what i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate this module three times on the black header there we just hit the two squares or two oblongs to duplicate grab the cross left click drag it across doesn't matter which one you drag across because they're both the same doing the same thing and one more time hit the two squares grab the cross left mouse and then drop it let go of your left mouse button when you're done so now we've got our four modules and they're all the same i mean that looks pretty good like that obviously you want to change the content but i just changed the colors in that and knocked off the pseudo element on the last one as if it was a result sort of thing a final stage so let's go into our little modules and change a few things around let's pretend we've got less text in this one and yet it stays the same height because we've given it that height and let's go change the background i'm not going to spend too much time on this whatever color you choose you want to copy it just copy it because you want to put it in your pseudo element Control c to copy i just left click dragged and now i'm copying and let's change up our icon image and icon we're still under the content tab
Okay. Oops, I forgot to do the pseudo element. Let's go back in there, a little cog. Go to our advanced, custom CSS. Down to our after. And let's change our background color here and just paste in that green that I copied just now. There we go. Save that, move on to the next one, same thing. Let's just add a bit of text to this. Um, make like we've got something to say here. I'll move that out of the way so you can see. So that one's got more text in it now. And let's change our icon, close that one up, go to image and icon, just select the next icon I see. That's fine. And then of course we want to change the background color. Again, it really doesn't matter. That's absolutely fine. I'm going to copy that color. Go to our advanced custom CSS down to our after. Change that background color. Boom. OK, <laughs> obviously didn't copy that color. Let's undo that. Control Z. Go back to our content, to our background. Just click on it. It'll open this up. Let's copy that color again. Control C. Let's try that one more time. There's our background color. Boom. There we go. That's what I wanted. And last but not least, we'll do this little one right here. Again, let's just take a bunch of text out. So they've all got different texts in there. Let's go down, grab another icon. Really doesn't matter what. Close that up, change our background color. This, of course, if you don't want it, don't have to. I just make it red. Copy that color, see if we can actually do it this time. Copy. Back to our suit. In fact, I don't even need to do that on this one because I'm going to get rid of that pseudo element on this one because I want it to be like the end, the terminal. So if I go to our advance to our custom CSS, and I'm just going to select everything in the after box and delete it. So we've got no pseudo on pseudo element on the end of that one. Save that. Save our changes. Little purple button right here. Save. And exit the visual builder. There we go. And if we go down, there's the original one that I did earlier. And here's our new one right here. Only difference between the two is this has got a bit of box shadow on the pseudo element there. And obviously you can have six of these, or however many you want, three of these, whatever you want to do. It's just a nice little addition to the Divi theme there. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Very easy to do and it's quite an eye catching little effect. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and share. If you're interested in web development, take a look down below. We've got some great free web development courses down there, as well as some premium courses for our YouTube subscribers with some huge discounts. So do check it out. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.